How's it going? Welcome back to another great video with the Majestic host, the Saviour, that's right. And I'm actually so, so happy to be talking about Kunitsugami, that's right. I do live in Japan, so my pronunciation, if I butcher that, then I have committed a great shame. So, gomenasai. I can't speak Japanese, by the way. Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess, okay? This game, holy shit, this is amazing. This game is a goddamn gem. And I'm very afraid that this is going to be a very hidden gem for many of you because nobody is talking about this game. So today I'm going to be giving you my Path of the Goddess review, my Kunitsu Gami Path of the Goddess game review and dissect exactly what this is because many people aren't really sure what this game even is. The reason I'm so passionate about this game, well, first of all, I love Japanese culture, okay? And I love Japanese history. I don't live in Japan because I'm a goddamn weeaboo, believe it or not. I actually hate that shit. I really do love Japanese ancient history, you know, things like the Oni, as you can see behind me, I've got two Oni masks, which basically means demons, kami, spirits, all of that kind of stuff. I absolutely find that stuff fascinating. And this really takes inspiration from the Kamakura period, and the enemies here are just so beautifully designed. But what surprised me most is how creative and fun this game actually is. This reminds me of games that we used to get back on the PlayStation 2, or even back on the PlayStation 1, very experimental stuff, okay? We used to get a lot of cool Japanese games being made. They've got the money, they've already secured the bag, okay? So then they just let people in their studio cook, okay? They just let them go with their creative drive, and that's exactly what I've been complaining about, and that's exactly what we need. And if we don't support creative games like this, then we are just going to be left with the AAA garbage, with reused ideas, open world, bloated content, live service games, and all of this stuff that's been destroying gaming for many, many years now. So I'm so glad that we're getting such a cool experimental title like this. Let's purify ourselves and let's dive straight into this Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess review. I really do hope you enjoy this one. Let's just jump straight into it because I'm so excited for this game. I've been playing it over and over again just because I love it so much and it's very addictive. It's one of those games that actually reminds you why you like video games. It's so refreshing, I have to say it's so refreshing to get a game that reminds you, okay, video games are fun because they are interactive art, okay? They don't need to always have like high intense storylines, they don't always need to try and do everything. This is focusing on great tower defense, or shall I say princess defense gameplay with wave-based encounters and deep tactical choices mixed in with action combat, which is something we really don't ever get. And in such a cool, unique setting as well, the art style of this game is just amazing from the menus down to the creature designs. So I really think that you're gonna be in for a treat if you like that type of experience. It's not gonna be for everyone. The experimentation in Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is just so breathtaking and it really, like I said, reminds me of older games but with new gen graphics, great action-based combat and a lot of hidden features that surprise me like mini games when you cleanse the tolly, uh, you know, you actually have to do like a mini game to kind of encase the spirit to cleanse it. So let's give a quick brief overview of what this game is and then let's break it down into positives and negatives like I do with all of my early reviews. And before we do that, quickly, do consider subscribing if you are new to the channel. It would mean so, so much to me. You have no idea. I put everything that I am into this channel, my heart and soul into this. If you like gaming analysis, philosophical videos, you're in the right place. That's all I'm going to say. Try and keep my intro short because I do need to work on that. Um, but please do consider subscribing. Become a wise one join this great community. I love interacting with you guys and I have gone full time. If you do really find my videos useful or enjoyable, it would really mean a lot to me because um, like I said, I can't really go full time without your support. So do consider dropping a small donation to support the show. Um, it would mean a great deal to me on PayPal or on YouTube, thanks, whatever it is. Thank you so much. Now this game, like I said, it's only going to speak to some people. I think a lot of people aren't gonna like this. If you don't like micromanagement, if you don't like um, wave-based gameplay, or 
a little bit of repetition. There are some really cool things here that stop it from feeling repetitive or if you don't like lots of tactics in your games where you actually have to think or perhaps you're the type of gamer who likes to climb up painted cliff sides which you can't fall off because modern gaming this is not going to be for everyone, it doesn't have a rich story, what it does have is fascinating gameplay, okay? So like I said, this is wave-based monster action slaying with tactical elements where you actually command your little troops, your NPCs that you can gather over the course of each level that you have to save and cleanse and then you get access to unlocking these different NPCs characters, okay? Think of it as kind of like Pinkman, for example. <laughs> Pikmin, I mean, <laughs> um, but pretty much the same thing, let's be honest, they're both slaves. Um, and then you can actually give them different job positions and different tasks to perform. So you can have like a mage, you can have archers, you can have ground support, you can have things like shaman, pretty cool stuff. And there's a lot of variation to that and you can upgrade them. And then you can actually command them and tell them where to position. And basically the whole goal of this is to get your little princess to the tolly, the next tolly, okay? And then she needs to cleanse it, okay? The tolly is just a gate, um, you know, that basically is outside of Japanese shrines, if you don't know, okay? And it's so funny that people call it tolly gate because in Japanese tolly is already saying gate. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So in some ways, like I said, it is a kind of a tower defense game but you are much more involved compared to other tower defense type games because like I said, you have this character, you can die, and you actually have some pretty cool abilities in combat, lots of different combos. The combat is quite simplistic, but you can do things like jump attacks, special AOE attacks, all of that kind of basic stuff. You're not just grinding for the next upgrade or anything like that. Basically, you have to make meaningful decisions because you only have a limited resource pool. And basically, it's a day and night cycle, okay? So at nighttime, that's when the monsters, that's when the Oni come through the spirit dimension, okay? And then in the daytime, you have time to prepare and gather resources. And you get resources by cleansing different parts of the map. And then once you've successfully completed a wave, you can then unlock to the next point of the map. And think of these levels as long, giant roads, okay, until you reach the end. And then sometimes you will be fighting a massive boss, which is very, very interesting. And it's not the most engaged boss battles I've ever seen. Not like lots of different um, stages of the boss battle, but the way you have to manage your troops and your other NPCs and stuff like that and protect the princess at the same time, that's what makes it fun. And at no point, you know, during the game, I ever felt like, okay, this is annoying. This is like a goddamn horrible PTSD flashback from Resident Evil 4, you know, basically protecting a useless damsel in distress. Um, the escort never really feels like that because yes, you do have to protect the princess, but she moves so slowly. It's more about making sure that, you know, the enemy doesn't reach her because she's not just like wandering around trying to get herself into trouble. She's kind of at the back until the wave ends. You cleanse like a goddamn mofo, okay? Because Japanese, trust me, okay, they love purifying. They love to be clean. And before you enter a shrine, you have to do a little purification uh, ceremony if you're doing it right. Not like a lot of tourists do, but you need to cleanse yourself with water and all of that stuff. And I like how it really does pay homage to the Japanese old culture and these old fables and stories of Oni and, um, you know, these kind of twisted demons and creatures and spirits and all that kind of stuff. And then the soundtrack as well is great with these big heavy drums that you would hear in festivals and stuff like that, which I think they did a great job on. And it does pay homage to the kind of background of Shinto philosophy, you know, which is really found in ancient Japan where, you know, you are kind of cleansing and being a part of nature and you're trying to kind of maintain your position in that nature, which I think is quite fascinating. And all of this is done through a storytelling that isn't direct and isn't telling you exactly what's happening 24 seven. You have to think of these things yourselves. So an action escort tower defense type game, okay? In which you basically cleanse these points, gather the resources, and then you use these resources to upgrade your NPCs and give them different roles, like I said, like um, a shaman, for example, or archers, whatever you need. And then you can command them 
where they need to be on the map and you can also switch between defensive and offensive if you want them to follow you around and be you know helping you in battle or if you want them to just defend this one location you also use these resources to build actual points in the map defensive points to you know stop the demons breaking through that will buy you time but also to actually move the princess along you also need to use the resource points that you find in the map in the daytime to actually move the princess. So you can either focus on just trying to stay alive and then using all of your allocated resources just to move the princess along but have no defense, or you can go the defensive option or the offensive option. So lots of different tactics at play here, and that's what I love. This game, you know, gives you lots of different options on how you want to tackle each situation, and it always feels balanced and difficult never easy, which I like. They don't just give you abundant resources in any one location, and you really have to think about, you know, what is worth upgrading and what's not. So that's a huge, huge positive. Small negative, like I said, is some people will not be a fan of the micromanagement, and sadly, that I do feel they could have implemented better on like a quick, you know, wheel pop-up. Instead, you have to kind of pause the game and then choose, you know, your action. That does slow down the combat because this is still an action game, which I like. Um, you can speed up time. So basically you upgrade yourself with talismans and abilities, but mostly what you're doing is upgrading your actual troops and allies and all that kind of stuff. And I like how wide these levels feel, okay? It's not like going on forever, forever, but they all do feel unique and they are actually quite big because, you know, you have to follow this long winding kind of route and you can backtrack and stuff like that as well and unlock different things, which I like. So it's pretty cool. And basically, you know, there's a lot here to, you know, keep you engaged, I would say, when you are trying to think of the best possible, you know, way to progress. If you want to upgrade a certain way, your abilities as a combat focused, you know, man who does most of the heavy lifting in this game, you are kind of a traditional samurai and you just hack and slash basically, or you can go the more tactical route and upgrade your allies or just the actual world space itself, which is pretty cool. It is using the RE engine, so for people who like that, I think it was best used in Resident Evil 2. It does look good here. I believe that is the correct engine. Um, and honestly, it looks way better than, you know, something like Resident Evil 4, in my opinion. And I just love the art stuff. The creature designs are so cool. The action itself feels meaty and weighty. The soundtrack is on point. Um, and I just love the aesthetic for this. And like I said, this game is not going to be for everyone, but for people like me who are fans of light strategy games, you know, slight RTSs, real-time strategy games, um, I think this is going to be a big, big hit because it's not too overbearing on the tactical side of things and the strategy, and the action actually feels good um, so it's a really nice balance, I would say. Another positive for me was the camera perspective, okay? If this had a local split-screen mode, that would be so awesome, you know, like a local uh, multiplayer. That would make this game even better, in my opinion. But I really like the camera perspective. It's not, you know, too... It never gets in your way, and that's something that a lot of games just don't get right, and I think that is worth praising, surprisingly. I haven't really seen many bugs. Bear in mind that this Kunitsu Gami Path of the Goddess review is based on the early gameplay that I've played, not the final build as of yet, but it pretty much is the final build. So bear that in mind. I did get to try this out, hands-on and everything, and I'm just having a complete blast with it. Um, I think it will get repetitive for a lot of people, so it's not going to be for everyone, but this is what the gaming industry needs right now, is creative ideas, and especially for Game Pass, which is kind of taking a strange route at the moment, and now it's bumping up its prices. Um, so it's important to support smaller games like this, but obviously it's not going to be a mainstream success hit, um, which is a shame because I think this game is actually pretty cool. Um, but obviously I'm a massive Japanese aesthetic person, but obviously I really am interested in ancient Japan and history and all the fables and stuff. But just from a gameplay perspective, this is doing something different and it just takes me back to when games were about creativity, pursuing something not just for, you know, the most profit or, you know, to try and reach the widest audience you can, like a goddamn Mr. Beast video, just about pursuing something creative. And I think Capcom have nailed this. 
and it's something that everyone should try at least once in my opinion. So the only two negatives and that's all I have, everything else were positives which is quite surprising um, because usually it's not like that. Um, and bear in mind this is just my own opinion and perspective, your mileage may vary of course, but the small negatives I would say is the micromanagement, not everyone's going to like that. Um, it can be a little bit frustrating as well with how slow the princess moves and just the fact that this will be repetitive I think um, after a time and it's not going to have much replayability to it. It's one of those games that you can pick up and enjoy a session and then kind of put back down. The bosses and combat also could have been slightly better but everything else just fits and works very nicely. It's kind of a simple game which I like. Um, so that is my Path of the Goddess review. Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess review, okay, I should say. It's a long ass title, but I would recommend it. If you're only a fan of combat action games, this doesn't quite have the combat footing underneath it to, you know, truly grip you, I think. But if you like a mixture of strategy and thinking and wave-based gameplay, then I think this is going to be perfect for you and I would highly recommend it. And like I said, you know, there is challenge, there is progression, but it's done in a refreshing way. And what really hooked me in with this was just the aesthetic, the art style, the kind of new take on this genre that I haven't seen before. Nothing is done amazingly well. Um, obviously, we've got better real-time strategy games. We've got better boss battles, but it all comes together in a very unique and satisfying package. So that is my Path of the Goddess review. I do hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did, please do consider subscribing if you are new. And thank you for my wise ones for tuning back in. You mean absolutely it. I don't know what that hand movement was, but you mean absolutely everything to me. So I just have to say thank you so much. And uh, again, do consider dropping a small donation so I can keep doing this. I've got some exciting stuff in the works, um, which is giving back to you guys for community a giveaway and stuff which I'm planning to do soon. I don't usually do that kind of thing. I think it's kind of terrible how YouTubers rely on giveaways um, to basically bait for subscribers. I'm not doing that. I'm not saying you need to subscribe to get it. I just want to give back to my actual subscribers. So look forward to that and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.